friends, it's M, and welcome back to another video. Today, we are doing the January in review spread. Also, if my voice is a little weird, it's because I have a Jolly Rancher in my mouth to keep me from yawning. Um, in this one, I'm hoping to have a little more journaling in my spreads this month, sort of about how I felt about the month in terms of reading, what my favorite books were, etc. I have seen so many cute reading spreads that review the month and I really like it. I'm not huge on like breaking down which books I liked and which books I didn't like. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just feel like I really only want to talk about the books that I like. I don't want to, you know, insult someone else's favorite book or anything like that. So this month I read 29 books. Initially, I had thought that I was going to finish the 30th one and have it be a 30 books, but I didn't, and that's okay. As usual, my reading was predominantly ebooks as well as arcs. Obviously, most of my arcs are also ebooks, so this kind of makes sense. But again, in January, my BIPOC and LGBT rep was extremely low, like lower than I would say normal for me. So this is something to be mindful of moving into February, really prioritizing the titles that I'm reading, making sure that they have BIPOC authors and or LGBT rep in them. Disability rep for the month was about 50-50, so I was pretty content with that. Again, I also read a lot of romance, but what stood out to me was that I, in January, I read two nonfiction books. I don't have a goal necessarily of reading one nonfiction book a month, but I think it's just going to kind of happen that way. I'm a huge fan of having the audio for nonfiction because it's, then it feels more like a podcast and I'm more likely to listen. I don't know. That's just me. Upcoming in February is gonna be, you know, just kind of like a little more self helpy. I think those are probably gonna be the vibes that are gonna happen. But January was all about like kickstarting, getting, well, 29 books, right? So that's about t almost 10% of my reading for the year done if I wanted to do 300 books again, which I don't. I do not want to read 300 books in 2024. Will I? Maybe. Do I want to? No. No. What I want to do is I want to read every book on my TBR cart. And I want to read 50% BIPOC and 50% LGBT rep. I don't know. We'll see. I also... I've really delineated what a thriller, mystery, and suspense are in this. <laughs> Essentially, what, like, if I read a thriller by a British author, usually it's not a thriller. It's usually closer to, like, a mystery or a suspense. That's just sort of where I'm sitting on that. That might be a hot take, but I don't think that their, their thrillers are as thrilling as I expect a thriller to be. Now, in terms of NetGalley, I went a little wild this month. <laughs> So I read the exact same amount as I was approved. So I'm still at 38 currently on red. I was at 37 and then the night of January 31st, I heard that Hannah Brown's new book was written by a ghostwriter and I was like, boom, I need to, I need to pick that up for a challenge. So that's where we stand on that. I am still at 93% feedback ratio. And I just finished today, today's the fifth, um, I just finished The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett, which should be, I should be able to turn that in on, on NetGalley to sort of get my first review of the month. <laughs> now, in terms of my favorites in January, I had a, I had a lot. <laughs> Two of these are released. One of these just came out, and then 
two of them are coming out later in the year. So we're going to kind of like work backwards, I guess. The first book that I read and just like absolutely loved was Business Casual by B.K. Borison, which is the fourth and final book in the Love Light Farm series. It is just all of the just impeccable fall vibes. And you get to you get to find out some answers to some long ass questions. And I'm, it's just it's so cute. If you want romance, this one has definitely more steam than, than like they've increased in steaminess level as we've gone on, which love that for you, Bex. I also read and loved Tress of the Emerald Sea. So this was a buddy read that I did with Ashley and Steph. And it's kind of like it it felt very fairy tale, but also fantasy and a little bit of sci-fi, because there's you you end up on like a ship that's sailing the seas of dust. Well, they're not dust, they're spores, but it's it's a whole thing. It I do think that if you'd read Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere series, you'll enjoy it more. I had not, and I still totally enjoyed it. If you're a high fantasy fan, you'll love it. I also read and just adored uh, The Fastest Way to Fall by Denise Williams, which this book definitely got me back on my wellness journey, but specifically like being in it for the right reasons. So the the main character in this book is fat and she loves her body and she just wants to sort of test what her body can do and build strength and stuff like that which i love i loved that and i was thinking okay you know i really want to build some endurance and you know fuel my body for all of its you know trials that it's going to see throughout the day and it's great and she she falls for her personal trainer and he falls for her it's a little bit epistolary because they're like sending texts to each other it, it is just a beautiful romance and i loved it so much it's fabulous on audio they did a great job then i recently read just for the summer by abby jimenez the main character's name is emma <laughs> And so it's about a uh, traveling nurse with like a, a tech startup kind of guy. Um, but the whole point is that since she's traveling across the country, she's only going to be there for the summer. And initially, both of these people have this kind of like funny little like magic adjacent thing about them where... Um, after they break up with someone, that person gets married or gets engaged within a year. And so they think, okay, well, this would be funny. If we date each other, then we'll find that person. And obviously, we know that they're going to be each other's person. <laughs> but in typical Abby Jimenez fashion, it is just like so heart wrenching and like emotional. And I. I don't know if it's just because we share the same name or just because like it touches on a lot of issues that are close to me but this book hurt so good there's also tons of easter eggs to her other series but you don't have to get them to understand it fully which i also enjoyed and then finally it's bride by ally hazelwood i freaking love this book i basically made an entire video devoted to how much i loved this book and this book releases on February 6th. Mm, it's so good. It's delightful. Uh, if you loved Twilight, you're going to love this book. If you didn't like Twilight, which I did not, you're also probably going to like this book because it's not really Twilighty. <laughs> like there's angst and there's longing. And there's, you know, some elements of just supernatural attraction, right? But it's really good like the plot it was really fun and i'm it's gonna be a duology there's gonna be a second book i'm very excited for it part of me is wondering if it's gonna be called groom but that, i feel like that's a really bad name for a book so hopefully that does not happen it might it could also be called mate that could be cute um but it follows misery which is just, it just makes me laugh every time um 
who's a vampire, who's essentially uh, has an arranged marriage to a were, that's what they call werewolves in this world, um, in order to keep the peace between their two feuding societies. Um, and then humans are just kind of existing in the background. It is just such a absolutely delightful book. I, I could not put it down. I would not put it down. It was going with me everywhere. And I just found it to be so freaking enjoyable. I don't want to say much more about it. Like, I can tell you that I loved it, but I don't want to spoil any of the plot. Ah! <laughs> I will say January was a great reading month. I had a lot of flights, so when I'm on a flight, I'm reading, I'd say a, a book in two hours usually. And I had a couple of five hour flights. So I read 11 books over the course of the week that had all of the travel flights on it. And a lot of those books I really enjoyed. Uh, this Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan so good lovely uh butcher and blackbird by brain weaver <laughs> i was really glad that my seatmate fell asleep next to me so that he didn't see any of the dirty dirty erotica that i was reading it was it was a lot it was it was steamy i just there's really no words for it i've also somehow gotten back in berkeley's good graces knock on wood uh, they have been approving me on NetGalley again, which is great. For those of you who use NetGalley, the, the biggest sort of <laughs> uh, tips that I have for like getting the titles that you want is read the books, review the books, and then ideally review them in a timely fashion. Because the more books you have reviewed, right, then, then when you get a bunch of approvals like I do, I have 38 books that I still have to read. It doesn't damage your, your ratio as much. Additionally, uh, publishers can see the number of times you've been rejected or the number of times they've rejected you for titles. So, you know, keep that in mind. Don't request a bunch of books that you don't even want just to try and get into their good graces. Rather, focus on getting your ratio up because that can redeem you. And, you know, put interesting stuff in your bio use your bio tell them about yourself tell them why why should they pick you to read this book if you are you know uh, a basketball player well then they might pick you for a basketball book if they're if they're looking at your profile and you mention it otherwise they don't know you know it's just like some intern scrolling this stuff so you want to you know be the most it's like dating profiles then be the best version of you <laughs> But this is from someone I have over 500 books that I have submitted reviews for, and I still get denials. I got a denial from Avon the other day, and I was devastated by it. But, you know, it happens, and that's fine. So, as we're wrapping up, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, if you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. Let me know if you have read any of my favorites, or if you're going to read Bride, because talk to me about it. I loved it. I loved it. And... As always, happy planning.